Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you've watched the show before, we cover a variety of topics from docking to marine insurance. And the general idea is to provide you with some information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun on the water. And every now and then we take a trip down a side path I think you'll find interesting, and that's the case today. We're going to look into the world of model boat collections. And joining us as an expert in that area, his name is Fred Clausen. Welcome, Fred. Thank you, Paul. Nice to be here. Fred, uh, I think we've got a really fun show for people to watch today. And uh, you're an expert in that area. Can you share with people a little bit about your boating background and your background in the hobby? Sure. I started boating probably when I was 10 years old in the Adirondacks uh, in New York State. And then we moved here to uh, New Hampshire on Lake Winnipesaukee. Oh, 25 years ago, had a condominium for the uh, when the kids were young and we boated the whole time. Mm -hmm. The kids learned how to water ski on the lake and it was just a lot of fun. And yeah. Now we own a cottage business on the lake and uh, we're boating all the time. And my son took it over, uh, but he has three kids and we spend a lot of time out on the boats. All a lot right. of fun. How long have you been collecting? Collecting probably about 25 years. Mm -hmm. I still have some outboard motors uh, that were mine as a kid, mm -hmm. and they're in the collection behind us here. Right. Uh, I wish I had some of the boats, but I don't, and uh, I started collecting uh, to put them in the cottages for the kids to look at on the shelves, and when they played with them, I pulled them out. So. Right, right, and you've built up a sizable collection over the years, right? <laughs> yes, too sizable, but it's a lot of fun, <laughs> right. a lot of enjoyment out of it. Well, we're gonna take a, well, we're gonna take a look at a sample today. Good. Yeah. Well, Fred, in a larger collection like yours, you have a, a variety of boats made out of a variety of materials. And we've talked, you and I have talked about wood boats, plastic boats. We're going to talk about metal boats today. We've got one on display here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, when people think of model boats, a lot of people don't think of metal boats. Uh, right. But there are tin, there are die cast, there are heavy metal, there are all kinds of metal boats, and mm -hmm. that's what this show is about. Yeah. This one in particular is made by the Danbury Mint. Uh, it's a Boston Whaler Nauset model. Uh, right now, it goes on eBay, if you can find it, for between $350 and $500. Mm -hmm. It was given to me as a gift by one of my uh, guests over at the cottages. But it's extremely detailed with the fishing rods. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's got the trailer. It's got a, a, a brace for the trailer to be held up. It's got the life jacket, the paddles. Mm -hmm. But it's very heavy. It's all die cast. Yeah. And the realism is probably the best I've ever seen in, in a model boat. And it comes with your own certificate of ownership, mm -hmm. of title. Mm -hmm. It gives you all the details, and it's just a prized uh, addition to the collection. Yeah, it's got an old Mercury on there, yes. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, this one's more of our traditional speedboat. Now, this looks like it's been around for a few yes. years. What do you think? <laughs> uh, maybe 50s or 60s? Or? No, probably uh, early 50s, something, early something 50s. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, what, it's a tin boat and it's made by the company called Sakai. Mm -hmm. It's very unusual because you lift up the front, it doesn't come up now, but the engine is in, under the front hatch. Oh, it is. And the batteries are under the back hatch. Okay. It's extremely well played with. Uh, it's only 10 and a half inches, it's a rather small boat, mm -hmm. but the steering wheel uh, used to move. It doesn't doesn't direct the rudder at all, okay. but you can set the rudder and it is battery powered. Now this, was this an American-made boat or a foreign-made boat? It's a foreign-made boat in Japan, like in most Japan. of the boats were. Yep, Sakai okay. is a Japanese company. Sakai, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Well, here's another example. This is in a little better shape. <laughs> yes. Yep, and, but similar. It's kind of a racing runabout type feel to it. Yes, yeah. also made by Sakai, and it's Sakai Sashirasuku, is how they say that, but uh, uh, it's, a, again, an unusual boat. The batteries are under the life preserver. Okay. That opens up, you put the batteries there. It's what kind of batteries are we using? That should be C cells in that. C cells, pretty yep. big size. Yes, yeah. yep. okay. And it gives you ballast in the front, too, to, to weigh out the counterbalance, the motor in the back. I see, yeah. Unusual outboard motor does not have a, a brand name or a, a, a name of an actual motor on it, but the wires come up and wrap around the nuts uh, in front of the engine there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it was probably made by the same company because it's a fitting match for the size of the boat. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but I, I bought it together as a package on eBay and probably paid about $50 for it mm -hmm. you know, five or six years ago. Which is a pretty good price for a yes. model boat, yeah, right? Yeah, especially yep. with that engine. Yep. So you felt it was a valuable, valuable addition. Yes. And then here's, a, here's another boat. This has an interesting color combination to it with the red hull, the bottom, if you will, the white the top sides. And 
The orange. The orange, the maroon and orange <laughs> on the top. Uh, this also is a Sakai boat and uh, mm -hmm. made in Japan. They mm -hmm. did a lot of the metal boats mm -hmm. and the same sim similar type of engine. I believe this is a Sakai engine okay. with the nuts you, you uh, put the uh, wires on. The terminals on, yeah. And uh, it's in much, much better condition. Yes. The batteries will go under the, uh, the seat dish lifts out and the batteries go under there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not been played with that much. The flag is still in great shape. Yeah. And comes with the original box uh, with the logo and the picture of the boat on the front. Yes, yes. So that's a nice original, authentic uh, model. Yes. Yeah, that was a little more than the 50. That was probably 110 for oh, a package wow. like that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's a nice but one. Well worth the, uh, due to the condition. Yes. Well, Fred, you know, over the years, there was a real striking variety to the types of boats made out of metal and die cast. And this is an unusual example you have here, right? Yes, it is. This is really a kid's toy. I wanted to show it because some of the kids my age had pedal cars as, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And this is called the Kitty Craft. It's one of the few model boat kitty toys that are out there. You can sit in it, uh, the, the real one, as a kid and pedal it along. Mm -hmm. It has an outboard motor on the back. Okay. And it was made in 1996 in China by a company called Zonex, X-O-N-E-X. Yeah. It's extremely heavy. It's a die cast metal, but it's very heavy. But all the boats initially were supposed to be kids' toys, and now they've come into the collector's market. Oh. This is not necessarily a collectible, but of quite a few people have it because it's an old Woody pedal car, oh, and is. that's one okay. of the reasons it's in my collection. I see. Okay. Looks like at this. This is a whole different uh, flavor here. I, I've done, <laughs> as you know, a lot of shows on racing boats, and this is a three-point hydroplane. This is a this is a serious boat in the in the big size boats. They're very fast, very powerful. Yes, and, and it's a very unusual, it's the only one that I have, uh, it's made by a company called Badass, and uh, it's uh, by, uh, it's, it's called a T TFH1, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a boat that I would like as a person, but as a model boat I needed to have one in my collection because of what was involved with collecting with model boats. Yes. Very unusual, all the detail uh, with the engine. Uh, it comes on its own trailer mm -hmm. that was purchased separately, but these oh. run in the area three to four hundred dollars. Uh, it's, it's all die cast, very very heavy, but there's a market out there for uh, this type of drag boat that mm -hmm. people just seem to love. Yeah, you can see the detail there between the stacks on the engine and and uh, the the supercharger there. The, you see the parachutes in the back <laughs> here to slow it back down again. A lot of detail on yes, that boat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. which would be lost on me based on my other model boats, but I can understand it. Right. Let's take a look at this. This is the Vacationer. So this that is... makes sense. It's a little cruiser. <laughs> you go on vacation. Yeah, this is uh, by a company called Linemar, and the original box is there. And it's a tin boat. It's, a, it's not a die cast, but it's a tin. It is a metal boat. Okay. Uh, you can see on the motor itself, uh, instead of Evinrude, they call it Evanson, E-V-I-N-S-O-N. -E All right. They didn't buy the rights to market the Evinrude name, okay. so they came up with something uh, close. Yes. Uh, outboard on the inside, little hatches come down, and uh, batteries go uh, in under the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. and very, uh, I don't think it was used. It looks in actually perfect condition. It does, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny. It's got the imitation teak deck on there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the color looks kind of accurate to that time period, the, 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 the green uh, color. You know, that was kind of unusual green they used back in those days. Yep. It's, it's one of the most detailed tin ones that I have with the graphics. Some of them are pretty crude, which you'll see in a few minutes oh, okay. coming up. All right. And this one, Zoom Prop. <laughs> Another very unusual, it's by a company uh, made in Japan by a company called TET. The only boat that I have uh, uh, made by them. Very unusual rudder arrangement in the back. It's almost like a compass for setting the direction of the boat mm -hmm. because if you don't have a string on it, you have to set it in a circle to come around and come back to yourself right. or else you're going to lose the boat. Right. For uh, This was probably in the early 40s and it is in great shape uh, for that age boat. Mm -hmm. It definitely has been played with. It's probably about 13 to 14 inches long. Okay. Uh, does have plastic parts, uh, steering wheel, and but most of it is metal and the metal parts. Uh, so it's a mixture of parts it's in this a mixture. boat. Yep. It's a dual double cockpit here. Yep. Yep. And the, and the hull is kind of somewhat flat, so that reminds me of a 1950s, mm -hmm. 1960s boat. Okay. Yeah. And it does have the original box with it, which makes it very unusual. Uh, most of them, the tin boats, were uh, the boxes were no longer to be seen. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Fred, do you know um, 
the boats that were produced, there were a variety of boats, and then there was a variety of packages, right? There were boxes, and, and you've got a bag. You've got one that's <laughs> in a bag here. Yeah, this used to hang up on a pegboard rack in the store. It's made in the U.S. Okay. by a company called Ohio Art. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a basic boat. There yeah. is no motor to it. Mm -hmm. It's very light tin. It did float in the bathtub for the kids and okay. probably sold for around 98 cents uh, when it came out. Oh, very inexpensive. Very inexpensive. Price oh, tag is not on the boat. Yeah. But it was a definitely a kid's toy and was sold that way and meant to be that way. Was this about the 1960s, do you think? Uh, I would say in the late 50s. I don't know for sure, but I'd say in the late 50s, something yeah. like this. And was Ohio art a reference to them being made in Ohio? Or? I, I don't know, but they made a lot of metal toys overall. I don't know. I, I would mm. assume they would be made in Ohio, but you I don't know so. for sure. Right, right, right. Now here's one with a little more detail. And one of the things that strikes me is it's got a key at the top. Yes, it is a wind-up. Mm -hmm. It is also U.S. made, and you would wind it up. It would get to a certain point, and then you would uh, push the lever to have it go forward or stop. And okay. it's got the logo and made in the U.S. in the back. Oh. Uh, it's probably about 13 inches. Nice colors. Overall, very good condition. Yes. Uh, nice deck lines on it. But the fact that it's a wind-up makes it special. Oh, it does? Yes. Okay. Yep. Now, how far could it go if you wound it up? You know, maybe 10 feet? 10, or? feet? 10 or 15 feet, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is best in, best in a bathtub or a small pool? A small or pool, something yes. Like yeah. 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 But it, it did float. The name on the back is Princess Pat. Princess uh, a lot Pat. of boats, as you know, have names on the back, and yes. that's what they marketed this one under. Interesting. It's got the fake... Uh, uh, decking there, and it's got a lot of detail to it. They made little things in the windshield and, and the portholes and everything. Realism. Yep. Yeah, a lot of realism. Yeah, a lot of detail in the that deck, boat. The uh, cleats and horns are painted on rather than attached to Isn't it. Isn't that something? Less huh? for the kids to break off. <laughs> That's a good point. This one right here. This one, the th one of the things that strikes out to, uh, to me is the lights. I see some uh, red and green lights here on the on the top of the cabin, uh, on the front. Yes. Right over here. And I just have to straighten the cabin a little. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Yep. Um, yeah, they are plastic inserts. They're not real lights. This oh. is one uh, made by Sakai. Okay. Uh, all heavy metal. Uh, but they, there are no battery-operated working parts on here except the motor. The motor's yes. on the inside. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. The batteries come under the back. There's a lid on, the, on it. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of realism because the wooden boats had the same horns and the same uh, mast light. Yes. And uh, deck light, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, probably was for a flag. And oh, then there right. was a little broken piece on the front here. Yeah. Uh, before I cleaned it, it was absolutely filthy. It was almost dark brown yeah. uh, all across yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. deck. So someone stored but, it in their basement or their yes. attic or something, yeah. yeah. Usually when you buy boats on eBay, they come as is, and they yeah. always leave the uh, cleaning and the restoration to the new owner Makes rather than sense. messing with it themselves. Makes sense. This, this yeah. Again, this looks like a mid-50s to me. The way the deck yes. line of the cabin goes, it's got that curve, that shape I associate with cars in the 50s and the 40s. Yes, sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No. yeah. Very interesting. And then this boat here, is this another Sakai? This is another Sakai. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's a hydroplane. It may not fit the exact definition of a hydroplane, yeah. but it, it's a hydroplane. Mm -hmm. And batteries go under the compartment lid here. Okay. It's got a movable steering wheel. It's a little on the frozen side now. Okay. It has the uh, famous Buick ornament on the front. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting with this motor, I am going to turn it, boat is, turn it just a little because I want people to see the... Uh, um, have the box. Yeah. The uh, motor on the back, it's made by a company called Famous, mm -hmm. and it has a special dual propeller on oh, the one yeah, engine, right. which it's the only model outboard that has that situation. I've uh, never seen that it. before. Yep, very, very expensive. You know, probably now is $150, something like that. Mm -hmm. I've only uh, been able to purchase one. But it's uh, nice because of the design of the boat with the inset uh, outboard motor. Mm -hmm. And uh, in res relatively good condition. Yep. The front is a yep. little beat up, but uh, it does float and it does move along at a pretty good clip when there's a, the right size motor on it. Wow, so. that looks like a pretty rare boat. Yes, I, I've not seen another one for sale. I, that came in a package deal mm -hmm. uh, from somebody who was very happy to get it for the I collection. Bet. I bet. Well, Fred, as you know, I go to a lot of uh, classic and antique boat shows for the larger boats. Yep. And uh, what I've found over the years is that parts original parts are a key component of the collections that these guys have built of their boats and so that's true in the model boat building world as well right i've got a 
I've got a collection, for example, of, of rudders and shafts and propellers, <laughs> yeah. and that's key. That's that key in this universe, right? Because if the if the boat was played with like it's supposed to be, then it usually is missing the rudder, missing the propeller, the shaft, the life preserver. So you need this. This is a board that was sold uh, standing in the store counter, mm -hmm. and you would only buy one set unless you needed oh, two. Oh, I see. Right. And right. all the parts are there to replace everything on the bottom of the boat. Right. And mm -hmm. you've got quite a collection, so you you have a need for a lot of parts if you've got them, and you actually. Have have them right yes uh, I, and I buy the parts uh, separately whenever I see them for sale they mm -hmm. tend to be expensive mm -hmm. for example you have a single horn here which originally sold for 35 cents and now probably is uh, seven to eight dollars to get you have an antenna which originally sold for like 90 cents mm -hmm. and now to get something that size is probably about 25 dollars all right uh, this flagpole initially sold for like 30 cents and now they're on eBay for uh, 21 22 dollars so when I can buy them uh, in multiples and stockpile them, because I always need something. Yes. Uh, this particular steering wheel is a steering wheel as well as an on and off switch. The wires are here. It gets wired right into the boat. It's not oh, ornamental. Right. It's part. It's integral to the operation of the boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's key. That's key. And life preservers come in many, many different sizes. Uh, these are all made by K&O in this box here. Another brand that made them was Aristocraft. Uh, sometimes they're hard to tell the difference between the manufacturers. For example, this set of uh, four different steps that go on the side of the boat originally sold for five cents uh, for four of them. And now uh, you're lucky sometimes you can get one for seven or eight dollars. Uh, sometimes they're even more. This particular set in the front is uh, to restore the speedster or to start it from scratch. It's mm -hmm. got lights, it's got windshield. Mm -hmm. uh, you could buy the whole set together. This is a drive unit with a motor, which is made by K&O. Mm -hmm. And then you have another by TMY, which is another drive unit and uh, motor and battery holder. So you have the variety of things, anything you need to restore the boat. And it pays to stockpile. Right here. Yes. Well, Fred, do you know, as you look at the different, the evolution, if you will, of model boats, um, with all the different materials. This is a tin? This is tin, design? yes. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a little racing boat, and who's driving? Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear. Prevent forest fires. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so this is probably part of some sort of promotional campaign for the uh, forestry service, yeah. right? Or to get the kids to buy it, to have a recognizable figure on it. That's right. one good reason. And right. they call it the new ocean boat. Uh, yeah. Made in Japan, okay. as uh, most of the early tin ones were. Yeah, and this is uh, a wind-up, right? This is a wind-up, and yes. it has noise effects with it. Yeah. And uh, it actually does propel it through the water. And you can see through the top of the engine, you can see there's a little kaleidoscope type of effect yeah. in there that moves a along. A psychedelic thing going on yes. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a neat thing. I mean, the, uh, what I like about these is that you don't need batteries. I mean, it's yes. entirely self-propelled. You don't have to worry about that. Now, this is a similar tin wind-up, a little smaller. Much smaller. It's called a Swallow, uh, mm -hmm. also made in Japan by a company, Daiya, and uh, you wind it up also. It's got a different uh, noise that comes out of the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, engine is a super engine, oh. but it's only probably about five inches uh, long. Okay. But it does float. It goes in a nice small bathtub for the kids back in the 40s. Right. And uh, no plastic in the windshield, just a basic uh, tin boat. Yeah, they probably had a blast with that yes. in, in yeah. the bathtub. Yeah, we right? didn't go very far on a wind, but it was, no. it was fun. Far enough. Yes. Yeah. And then this one looks like a, it says pilot on it, so this is a pilot boat. This is a pilot boat. It's made mm. by Sutcliffe over in uh, England. Oh. And uh, one of the few br British boats that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not really a lake boat, which is what my theme is for my collection, but the fact that it was metal and made by Sutcliffe, I needed to have one of every manufacturer yes. in the collection. Okay. And um, But it's uh, in great condition, uh, no battery operated parts. Uh, just a, a neat little boat. Okay, so this would float you. Yes. Want, it doesn't propel. It doesn't Correct. move. Okay. Yep. And this is a little. Looks like a little race boat. It says Century Whirlwind. That that seems rings a bell for me. I think that actually was the <laughs> was name of a full size boat. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, this was made in the U.S., so that may be why it yeah. t tagged off the uh, real one. Yeah. And the outboard says Evinrude on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not motorized at all. It's just there for looks and display. Okay. It does float, but it is a light tin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, probably sold for under a dollar back in the late 40s uh, when it was produced. Yeah, just fun on the tub. Fun on the tub, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fred, you know from experience in this, this hobby of collecting model boats that when you go out to 
buy a boat. They don't often come in tip-top <laughs> shape. And we've got four examples here. We've got two that are unrestored, and we've got two that are replicas that are, we're using as kind of a, a sit-in for our an example of a restored boat. Um, <clears throat> do you find that to be the case, that you come across a lot of boats that need restoration? And what have you learned about that area over the years? Most of them need restoration. It's very hard to find any boat that is in perfect shape. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say it ruins the value when you do restore it. Other people like it. I personally like the boat in perfect condition, mm -hmm. uh, but not all my boats. I like to have in uh, used condition because there's a lot of kids' memories that are tied into it. Right. Two perfect examples here. Are, or actually, all four of these boats are made by Lionel, mm -hmm. so the train collectors would have an interest in them as well as the model boat collectors. Yes. And in the, this first boat here, this is the Lionel Craft number 43, mm -hmm. and this is the old one probably back from the 30s, mm -hmm. and it's a wind-up, and the, the key is missing, as well as some of the ornaments are missing on the side. Okay. It's, not been cleaned, hasn't been touched. Mm -hmm. It is a perfect example of a very well played with boat. Yes. And then on the uh, left side from the camera is the same boat that is a reproduction yes. made by Lionel. Mm -hmm. And that probably runs uh, three to four hundred dollars now to get. Yeah. The used one probably runs about a hundred dollars but needs a lot of work and some people don't want to put that amount of money and work into it. So and they'd be happy with it. If we were going to restore the older one to look like the newer one, what would you be talking about in terms of time and expense, do you think? I think it would take somebody, not full-time, but somebody working a month as hobby time and mm -hmm. would, would cost at least $200 to put into it. Mm -hmm. And yes, you would have a perfectly restored original boat, which may be a little more valuable than a, a, a rep, right. re replica boat. Sure, sure. So so don't be afraid of yeah. buying an unrestored boat. Correct. There are people that can out there that can do it. There's a, yes. there's a few specialists in that area, right? Yes, hard to find. And mm -hmm. uh, there are some people that try to do it themselves, and they don't do a great job. Mm -hmm. there, I found a couple of people that are very, very detailed, and they know what they're doing. Right. And right. it's not cheap, and so it's... But another example is the Lionel Craft number 44, which is more of a race boat. Mm -hmm. The one on the right uh, for the camera is uh, the unrestored, of course, model mm -hmm. without the drivers. Mm -hmm. And the one on the left is the re replica one, uh, which is the same pricing and the same restoration time and value. Right. Uh, it's just unusual to have one of each of the boats together. It shows what a kid can do to a boat over yes, the years. Yes, yes. So again, don't be afraid to get into the hobby. Whether it's restored or unrestored, there's there's a lot of maneuvering room, a lot of ability to participate either way. Yes, yeah. and you can practice uh, restoring yourself on a boat that's not as uh, expensive as some of these and see if you like it. If not, then you can go online and you can find people that do restore boats. Exactly. Well, Fred, you know, it's, it's funny when I look at the, some of the boats in your collection, they, they seem to take on the personalities of where they were built. So, you know, you see fancy boats, I think, in New York City or Newport or something like that. and and the boat we have here on display is, uh, I don't know, Arkansas Traveler, if I'm correct. And, and, and it seems to embody that simplicity that I oftentimes associate with Arkansas. <laughs> yes. It is, and there is a, a brand of real boats, the Arkansas Traveler. Right. And this probably was made as a promotional. There are a couple of different colors. The mm -hmm. one we have here is the red one. Mm -hmm. It's very basic, very simple. There's no wood flooring. There's no special designs on the inside. No. It does have a Sakai outboard engine on the back. It does. And uh, which it has the uh, nuts to... Uh, tie the uh, wires onto and the batteries yeah. to go up under the deck okay but it's probably about 17 inches long mm -hmm. uh, and the windshield just sits in there uh, not, not a fancy metal frame windshield right. uh, no ornaments on it no horns no lights just a basic stripped down uh, Arkansas traveler right and, and that's what like a, a lot a of very people like simple boat which yep. there, I can envision people using a boat like this uh, life-size in the in the lakes and ponds surrounding Arkansas yes. so I can see how that would be a perfect replica of the type of boat they'd use. Yep. Yeah. It's a very famous boat. Yep. So. Let's take a look at this one. This one is a kind of a different different and the one thing I'd recognize right away is it's got a different hull <laughs> shape to it. Yes. Uh, and different uh, on the propeller shaft on the bottom oh, comes yeah. uh, far more center than uh, the back uh, mounted some of them. Mm -hmm. This is made in England. It's called the Harold Flurry, F-L-O-R-Y, uh, Swift Boat. Mm -hmm. And what's very interesting, this morning on the internet, I found on YouTube a video all about this boat. You did. Uh, the fella who purchased it got it real cheap over in England because it didn't have a flag and it didn't have the rudder propeller. 
And he got it home, opened it up, and found it's brand new. It was in the inside, all in a nice envelope. And the guy got a bargain probably for about $5 on eBay. Wow. So he was thrilled. Yes. But uh, this is kind of a basic boat. The inside is perfectly clean and uh, uh, no rust on the inside. It's a tin boat, very mm -hmm. lightweight. Mm -hmm. Comes in the original box. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, it was made in England. It's probably about 18 inches long. Right. It's got an on and off switch in the back here. Yeah. Uh, slow, fast, and uh, stop. And has a nice dashboard in the front. I and see that. They got a little instrument, instrument uh, engraved yeah. into, the, into the dashboard there. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of a basic boat, a tin boat. It does float. So, yeah. uh, but the fact that it has the original box uh, makes me happy when I Does display it. it. Yeah, and again, yeah. Uh, that uh, unusual hull shape with the stern being round yeah. as opposed to flat. See, yes. It's different. Yep. Yep. What a beauty. All right. Now, here's another one. Okay, this is a big one. Yeah, it's about it is 18 a big one. inches also. Yeah. yeah. This is a uh, MSK boat. It makes me think a lot of the wooden boats that we've done previously, mm -hmm. but this one is all tin. Mm -hmm. It has the on and off switch here uh, with a little rubber nubber on the top to make it easy to handle. And the batteries go under the life preserver with, uh, I think there are two D-cell batteries in there. I have not put batteries in, but it has the uh, MSK logo on the back, made in Japan, mm -hmm. and has the original box with it, with the wonderful graphics on it. Yes. Uh, it's in reasonable condition, definitely played with, has not been restored, a lot of rust on the windshield, oh, yeah. uh, but that adds to the character of the boat and the typical uh, marine flag on the back. Mm -hmm. So kind of a rugged boat, so yes. you, you could take some of use, and it looks like it was actively used, which yes. is perfect, right? Yep, the water line is interesting. Uh, going back, it's meant to ride high in the, the front end in the, in the lake, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it does. And with the batteries uh, loaded in there, it's going to be a heavy boat to move along the water. Okay, yeah, that's a beauty. Here's one that collection here. Another Sakai boat. They were very, very popular with the metal boats. Mm -hmm. What's interesting on this is the steering wheel is in the center of the boat, yes. uh, rather than the right or the left. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has some play wear, as you can see on the inside. This is the battery compartment is underneath the seat here. Okay. And the uh, the, the front uh, deck light is Running kind of in light. tough yeah. shape. Yes. And it has the Buick ornament mm -hmm. and the horn, and I'm sure that was a, some kind of a antenna oh, yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. And it has the Sakai engine on the back with the nuts on the front to attach the uh, the wires from the battery. Uh, this one I have not had running. I haven't restored it. I haven't had it restored. Uh, I've cleaned it up and it looks overall in, in very good shape for mm. its age. Yes, it does, yeah. doesn't it? Well, Fred, you know, it's hard to believe, but uh, we're out of time for the show today. And uh, we've covered a lot of ground, a lot of though, ground on yes. uh, metal boats. Uh, the variety of the boats, you know, the different shapes and sizes and colors and configurations. It's just a very, very interesting hobby. Uh, before we wrap up the show today, is there anything you'd like to share? Well, I'd like to encourage uh, other people who watch these shows to try to get in touch with us mm -hmm. uh, as far as any questions they may have. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a group in uh, Long Island, New York called ToyOutboardMotors.com oh. run by Bob McDonald. Mm -hmm. And he is accepting new members to the group and uh, talks about boats and everything too. Okay, and there's yeah. another one, Collecting Toy Boats. Is Co that another one Collecting too? Toy Outboards. Toy Outboards, okay. And Which that's another on... place where people can go for information on this Yes, stuff. that's on Facebook. Yeah. And that's run by Denny Cole, and yeah. he's very knowledgeable in everything to do with Toy Outboard Motors. Wow, so, excellent. Yeah, good sources of information. Well, thank you for joining me today. Great. Thanks for coming up and filming again with us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. If you have comments or questions or input, uh, please join us at uh, www.smartboatingus.com. Thank you.